<laughs> That's awesome! Everybody, so I have this crazy theory. My theory is that when we're working on this stuff, we're working together as a team. And so I answer the comments I can, I look at the suggestions, and to prove that I'm not crazy, of course, this video is about that. That is the aspen leaf hinge that was suggested by loads of people because it will rotate in the wind, it will go that way, it will go that way, it has much freer degree of movement. Now really, it's a ball and socket joint, and clearly, I did this on a 3D printer. And some folks have been saying, you know, it's a bit of a cheat to do it in a 3D printer, can't you make it with hand tools? Well, yes you can, but you've got to remember, a 3D printer is just a tool in the same way that a hammer, a saw, a screwdriver, they're all tools. In fact, my chop saw cost me £130, which is more than a 3D printer. I mean, sure, I had to spend 15 minutes learning how to use it and a further, I don't know, 45 minutes printing, and then a couple of weeks just getting better and better at it. So once you pick it up and get going with it, well, it's like a hammer. People think you can use a hammer. They can't. Most people actually choke a hammer. I can drive a four-inch nail with two blows. That's actually quite a skill. My brother taps at it. It takes forever. So it's just a tool. Like any other tool, it's actually not that expensive. It enables you to do things with no contact time. So you could make something like that. Oh, by all means. But you'd be at it for ages. With this, I just set it going and left it alone. It actually took half an hour to print. There are two grams of plastic in there. Well, that means is, given that the plastic I use costs 15 quid a kilogram, there's about three pence of electricity in, uh, sorry, of plastic in there. And you can print for 10 hours uh, at 15 pence, I believe. So there's about 0.75 pence of electricity. So that cost me less than four pence to make using a 3D printer, not including the cost of the printer. So. 3D printers are just a modern tool, and I do not want to turn into one of those boys who sits staring at his mobile phone while his grandkids pokes in an app for him. I like keeping up with stuff. So I'm having fun with the 3D printer, that's true, but remember, it is just a tool, and actually it's not that much more expensive. Now, the ideas that I picked out of the comments of the previous video were, of course, the Aspen Hinge. I love it guys, I thought it was an ingenious idea, so I've replicated it and we'll be putting that into a structure to see how it actually responds, because we don't know. One thing we do know is that if this is on a spring, of course, we've got effectively a two, three pole problem, and three pole problems are outside of the ability of Newtonian mechanics to calculate. It is in fact an emergent system. It's a chaotic system, I don't know if you've ever seen three poles dancing, but three poles, three points of pivot, always lead to a chaotic system, and chaotic systems have emergent behaviour. That is, the behaviour is non-predictable, it emerges out of the system as a whole, and the only way to tell what's going on is to build it and see. I love that, hey, I'm an experimenter, I'm somebody who likes to get his hands on stuff and see, so I love that. But it's the only way to actually deal with it. When you have more than one point, two points of pivot, you get to a situation where a model doesn't help you very much and you have to build it and see. So I'm looking forward to putting that into the structure and seeing what actually happens, particularly in terms of um, the generation. Now, this was a popular choice. Quite a few people mentioned the Aspen Hinge. A couple of people mentioned cutting down the structure so it's effectively a C-shape with the coil at the bottom. That I absolutely loved. And there was lots of people suggesting bamboo as the spring. And equally, I loved the idea of bamboo as a spring. So I went out to my local store and bought these. These are actually bamboo skewers. And this was, in fact, Bacon Wizard's idea. So they're bamboo barbecue skewers and they have a bit of spring and I pay a pound for a hundred of them. So that was a penny. I mean, that's just awesome, really. So the ideas that I'm picking up aren't necessarily good ideas. I mean, I like them. And that's the thing, because they meet the objectives of the project as far as I am concerned. Other people have different ideas. In my world, what I'm interested in is the cost of production. If we can bring down the cost 
of the electricity generated were on to a winner. If we improve something but also increase the cost so it's questionable, then it doesn't actually fit within my world view. That means it's not a bad idea, it just means that it's not something I agree with. And what do I know? I'm just a fat boy in the backwoods of Kent. I don't know, I'm just guessing most of the time. But I like ideas that simplify something, reduce cost, but maintain the generation so that the overall cost of generation comes down. Now, quite a few people have suggested putting strings of magnets. Now, that's a good idea, but you have to bear in mind that the energy of this system comes from the swing of the pendulum. That pendulum has momentum that carries it through the magnetic field, generating electricity. As we take some of that energy out, that pendulum is going to slow. And we don't know how much it's going to slow by, but it is going to slow. So the second magnet it hits, it won't generate the same amount as the first magnet it hits because some of the energy has been taken out, the pendulum has lost momentum, less will be generated in the second and third magnet. Still generate, but it will be less than the first magnet. So the question is, putting an arc of magnets, is that more expensive for the electricity generated than just making two of these? Difficult to know well worth testing but my instinct is just to make a load of these because once you get into the swing of it it's much cheaper and easier so that is why i pick up ideas and is why i take ideas that i like and turn them into something else not because they're respectively good or bad ideas it's just i have an objective in what it is that i'm doing and i have ideas of what i think meets that objective now a lot of people are saying, can I have the SDL file? Well, yes is the answer, but remember, these are prototypes, so the chances are they're not going to match what it is that you want to do. So I'm much keener on showing how I did this to make an STL file, so that you can do the same, or you can change it to meet what you want to meet, or if I've got it wrong, you can improve it. So I think it's always better to know how to do something so that you can do it, rather than here you go, here it is finished. So at the moment, the SDL files are prototype files. The rest of this video actually is going to be about how I drew the, Hasp the um, Aspen hinge. And remember, it's not really just a ball and socket joint. It's how I drew it on um, Tinkercad. So if you want to check that out, check it out. If you want to replicate it, there's how I did it. If you want to make changes, well, knock yourself out. I would only ask that you let us know, especially if you make it much better than I did, which is extremely likely. Anyway, let's get on and have a look to see how I actually made the Aspen hinge. So to do this, we're gonna need two shapes. One from the basic shape, which is the cylinder. So grab a cylinder and pop it on, and then we need to go back to basic shapes, click on design starter, and choose that lozenge shape there. You can see I've got all the sizes on because I always put the ruler on, which is right there. You click here, drag and drop the ruler, and you'll get all these sizes. And we need to resize everything. So this cylinder, we need it to be a centimetre. All the measurements in millimetres for me, incidentally. 10, 10, 10. And we get our cylinder. For our lozenge, we want it 10, 10, and then two centimetres or 20 millimetres high. So there we go, we've got our basic cylinder and our basic lozenge, and now we need to centre them to each other. To centre them to each other, highlight them both, click on the centering, and if you click on one of them, it will centre to one or it will centre to the other. I'm going to centre to the lozenge. To centre to the lozenge, click the centering and centre. And we've got this flat bottom torpedo shape and now we can group it. If we group it, it'll all become one thing as far as it's concerned. There's our flat bottom torpedo. Now we want to rotate it 90 degrees. To do that, we can grab those arrows there or we can just click on it and type in the degrees we want it rotating and it will rotate for us. It rotates about the centre, so it's actually 5mm above the plane. Let's change that to zero so it actually sits on the plane and there it is. Now we want to put a cut in it. To put a cut in it, go back to basic shapes, choose yourself a block, and then we can change the size of that block. Now we need it to be 4mm high, and we need it to be 10 wide, and 10 deep. And then we can centre those to each other again. So click the centre, we're going to centre it to that one, so we need it centred there, centred there, and we want to put it on the edge there. Now we have a little cut. 
it's not quite a cup yet we have to change it into a hole but if we use this box here it will zoom down to where we want it to be so we get a much better view of it if we click on the box and we click hole then it will cut a hole in our torpedo as long as we group it so we group that there we go we have a hole cut in our torpedo now we want to make it so it's got a little sphere in it so collect the sphere and this time we want it to be 8 by 8 by 8 so we want an 8 millimeter sphere 8 8 8 and then again we can center everything to our torpedo shape so hit center hit the torpedo shape and start centering so you click the centering buttons if we put it there then we've got it nearly right if we have a look at it we can make that a hole and it'll show us what it's going to be like when we make it a cut so change it back to a solid shape this time the sphere we need to change to a hole and then if we highlight everything and hit group it will actually cut out that piece for us now we want to do something else first so highlight the sphere and this time copy it and move it we want to move it out one two three four and we'll get a little indentation in the end of the sphere there and we've done it to the midpoint because remember those spheres are eight millimeters wide and that's what we get that is our actual holder now we want something to put into that holder and we need to give it a little bit of clearance so this time make your sphere seven by seven by seven and again this centering is really important actually we center it and of course we center it to this center center pop it in there okay now we have made it a millimeter smaller if we have a look at that as a whole we'll be able to see where that sphere is and there it is sitting just a little fraction in so we remove that a millimeter out then zoom in on it they can see that we've got clearance around that ball and that ball is sitting nice in its socket which is of course exactly what we want it to do back to home click that as a solid shape now we need some way of connecting it and of course we use a cylinder for that and this time we want to make that cylinder four four and it really doesn't matter on that actually on the height of it Rotate it 90 degrees. And rotate it 90 degrees that way. There we go. And you guessed it, we want to center it. Now we want to center it to the blue sphere here. So press down the shift key, hit the blue sphere, and it will center those two shapes. We want to center it to the sphere. So hit the center, hit the center, and attach it to the edge. There we go. Now you'll see it's actually gone right the way in. Click on it and just press it and it will come back out. And it doesn't really matter how far it sits in there as long as it sits in there. Okay, we're nearly there. We need a flap for this to sit on. So collect another box, stick it on there. Let's say we're going to make our flap 80 millimeters long and we're going to make it four millimeters high and again we want it centered on the rod so click on the rod shift key click on the little box center it we're going to center it to the rod and there and there we go now we know that that's one whole piece, so let's move that out and then we can group this little lot together. And we have our parts. Now this one is sitting 1.5 millimeters above the surface. You can see it there. Let's change that to zero. And then we've got two parts now ready to print. Now we've done it this way around because the direction of the grain is going to matter. It's going to print in that direction. If we stood it up, it would print in that direction. And of course, the wind is blowing on this, 
So if our grain is going in that direction, there's a very high likelihood that that'll snap. And the same is true here. This is 24 millimetres. The grain was that way, it would snap off there. If we put the grain that way, it's going to be much, much stronger. And exactly the same is true for this. So there's one other thing we need to think about. When this starts to print, it's got this overhang here. So it'll want to put support in the centre there, which you'll have to dig back out, and that'll be extremely annoying. So what we do is rotate that to 90 degrees. Now when we look at this, we can see that the cut is parallel to the base. So when it prints, it's not going to try and print any support, because all of these angles are less than 50 degrees. So we won't get any support in there and we won't get any grain problems. So now all we have to do with that is export it as an SDL and it will export for us to the download. So we're ready and to print. And there she is, printing away. So there you go, and that's how I made the Aspen Hinge. So I, personally, I'm loving this. Thank you very much to everybody for all your contributions, your, your comments, suggestions, and your help. It's fantastic. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed and clicked the notifications, you might want to, it'll let you know when something else is up and coming. And clearly, what I've got to do with this now is get it in a structure and see what kind of generation we get out of that. But people, awesome ideas!